Hello and welcome to Hobgoblin, the game of brutal fancy battles by me, Mike Hutchinson. In this short video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the core rules of Hobgoblin. I'm not going to worry about the advanced stuff like magic, uh, but give you a brief shape of the game. I'm not going to talk about army building, uh, but I will say what we've got here. We've got some goblins, light infantry, monstrous infantry and beasts, and we got some infernal dwarfs, both heavy infantry, although these guys have got ranged, and they've both got elite. Rounds in Hobgoblin are broken into phases, the initiative phase, the magic phase, the shooting phase, movement phase, combat phase, and doom phase. And in each of the phases, I get to activate all of my stuff, and then you get to activate all of your stuff, and then the phase ends and we move on. Let's, for the sake of swiftness, give the first player token to the Infernal Dwarfs. It's the shooting phase, the only unit that the Infernal Dwarfs have got with ranged is these guys. Uh, they've got range 12. Uh, it's the beginning of the game, so nothing's in range. The goblins don't have any ranged units, so we're on straight away to the movement phase. Units in Hobgoblin have a speed. That's how many movement points they get when they activate in the movement phase. Uh, infantry units have got eight. Monster and infantry a little faster with 10 and 12 for the beasts. These guys have been given the slow weakness, so they've actually only got a speed of six. So we'll go ahead and move these guys right away. Each movement point allows you to advance an inch. So we'll advance these guys uh, three inches. I think that's as uh, bold as they want to be. And we'll bring these guys up a little bit to support. So they will advance two inches, ready to shoot with their blunderbusses. With the movement done on one side of the table, it's now the chance for the other player. Now these guys can move eight, it's not quite enough to get them into contact with these guys. So they will move up uh, six inches and hang there. And these beasts will move, remember they had a movement of 12, so they are going to uh, scoot up eight inches to here. Then they will uh, use two further movement points, 9, 10, to scooch over there. And then they will pivot. And the way that a pivot works is that you uh, swing this corner around an inch for every movement uh, point you spend whilst holding the outside corner down. So we'll spin it around to there. And we'll do some movement here. These guys have got a speed of 10. So they can't quite get in to combat range here, but they will scoot all the way up. And this unit here will pivot for two, leaving them with six to bring themselves forward. There we go, nice and easy. That's the first turn of moving which leaves us in the combat phase, we've got nothing in combat quite yet, and the doom phase where we would check if anyone is doomed uh, and needs to be removed, but we're still uh, yet to acquire any doom tokens. So let's go straight on to round two. As the Infernal Dwarfs have the initiative, uh, the goblins will try and seize it. Uh, one's not enough to seize the initiative, so the first player token remains with the dwarfs, uh, so they will blast away uh, at the incoming trolls with their blunderbusses. When shooting in Hobgoblin, you roll five dice looking for a target number that's controlled by the target number chart. You look up the attacking unit's unit type, in this case, heavy infantry, and you check its target number against the defending unit, which in this case is monstrous infantry. That's a five plus. We know that this Infernal Dwarf unit has the elite keyword, as I mentioned at the beginning, and so that reduces that target number by one, so it's five dice needing fours. Three hits. For each hit, the target gains a doom token. You can record these how you like. I'm gonna use a little 12-sided dice. As that's all the shooting, we move on to the combat phase. Nothing's in combat, so it's the end of the turn. On round three, the goblins again roll to seize the initiative. One's again not gonna do it, so the initiative stays with the dwarfs. With the dwarf's shooting resolved, that's the end of the shooting phase for both sides, and so we start the movement phase for round two. There's no way these blunderbuss-wielding warriors can get out of range of the trolls, so they decide 
to move up an inch into combat. This unit here is worried about getting a unit of beasts in its flank. Although units can shuffle sideways, this can't be used to bring them into combat. So the warriors will decide to back up a little bit by reforming at the cost of five movement points, which allows them to pivot on the spot and use their remaining movement point to back up half an inch to ensure that the goblins and beasts can't get in their flank. The Infernal Dwarfs have moved, so now it's the goblins to move. The goblins move forward, just shy of four inches. The beasts do about the same, moving forward four inches. And then using a little bit more to close off the gap. These goblins will chill at the back and these trolls are already in combat and don't need to worry about it. With both players having activated all their units in the movement phase, it's now the combat phase. The Infernal Dwarfs are still the first player, so they're gonna resolve their combat attacks first. When attacking in combat, you find out your target number using the to hit chart exactly as before, except you roll 10 dice. This unit of Infernal Dwarf Heavy Infantry is gonna roll 10 dice against the trolls, needing fours as before. Four hits, and so the trolls receive another four doom, putting them up to seven. Infernal Dwarf Warriors now gets a chance to attack. They're also going to attack with 10 dice, but because they're engaged with two units, they have to assign their attack dice to each of the units. They have to assign at least three dice to each unit. So they'll assign three attack dice to the beasts and the other seven to the light infantry. Checking the target number, heavy infantry against light infantry is fours, but this unit is elite, and so it only needs threes to damage the goblins. That's five hits, and so the unit of goblins receives five doom tokens. The unit then rolls its attack dice against the beasts, needing twos on its three dice. All of them hit, and so the beasts receive three doom tokens. With combat completed from the Infernal Dwarfs, it passes over to the goblins. We'll start with the trolls. Monstrous infantry against heavy infantry is fours, so they're gonna roll 10 dice, needing fours to hit. That's four hits, placing four doom on the Infernal Dwarfs. But this unit also has a weakness called self-destructive, which means that each one they roll when attacking adds a doom to them. So they also get another three doom. Goblins against heavy infantry is fives. A lucky roll and four doom on the dwarfs. The beasts are less effective against heavy infantry and need sixes with their 10 dice. There's one six there, adding another doom token. With all the units having fought in the combat phase, it's over to the doom phase. When a unit has a number of Doom tokens equal to or greater than its courage, that unit is broken. And in the Doom phase, broken units first cause panic and are then removed from play. So we check each unit, and if it's broken, it panics any other unit within eight inches, which in the case of this broken unit, all of its fellow units are within eight inches, and so the panic gives them one Doom token. Neither of the Infernal Dwarf units are broken, and so no panic occurs there. Then broken units are removed from play. That's the end of the third battle round of this demo game. There's two more rounds to play. We'll leave it there for this intro game, and hopefully that gave you a sense of the basic rules of Hobgoblin. We'll come back in a subsequent video and talk about the advanced rules like magic and fortune cards.